Welcome back to the Bitcoin.com weekly update. My name is Corbin Fraser. Today's Friday, October 30th, 2020. This week, we'll be talking about whether Bitcoin can be deleted. GitHub recently took down several open source projects and many people are asking, is Bitcoin susceptible to the similar type of treatment that GitHub provided to this recent removal of a YouTube download or open source project? And before that, we've got several other news articles to share with you today. So stick around and make sure you subscribe. First up, we've got massive gold find in Russia proves Bitcoin is the more scarce asset. So prospectors in Russia uncovered over 40 million troy ounces of gold this week, causing people to question the precious metal scarcity. We can never really know how much gold is out there, but we do know that Bitcoin is a fixed supply of 21 million coins, and the majority of those coins have already been mined. So large companies are also investing heavily in Bitcoin, so many people are speculating that the dwindling supply could drive prices up even higher. Interestingly enough, the 21 million hard cap on Bitcoin is actually much lower than that. Many, many coins have been burned and lost just over the years. Uh, Bitcoin's now over 10 years old. In those 10 years, people have lost a lot of private keys and the money is just gone forever. So likely by the time Bitcoin mining completely mines up all of the 21 uh, million coins that are available to, to be mined, it'll actually be much less uh, in terms of circulating supply. So investors prepare for a volatile Q4 to close out the year. Bitcoin has been hovering around the $13,000 mark just over the past week, but the upcoming US election and a large number of Bitcoin options which expired on Friday have investors anticipating a very volatile end to 2020. So over $750 million worth of Bitcoin options were realized last week, which means that there are a lot of coins moving around leading to this increased volatility. So I would expect over the next week or two or even more that the prices will be doing some pretty erratic things. So keep an eye on those charts. Go check out markets.bitcoin.com where we've got all of the prices for all the coins. It's a good site, good resource. Go save it to your desktop and bookmark that bad boy. Bitcoin hash rate drops delaying 100,000 transactions. So the end of China's rainy season prompted the Bitcoin hash rate to drop significantly last week. Miners in China take advantage of the reduced energy costs during the rainy seasons, uh, but migrate to other regions when the season comes to an end. The hash rate has improved a bit as miners get settled in their new locations, but the backlog of unconfirmed transactions still remains at levels we haven't seen since 2017. So this is kind of a crazy story. Yeah, these Chinese miners, they, they move their whole mining rigs all over China, just following the cheapest, cheapest energy. But uh, yeah, when, when hash rate drops off, suddenly the BTC network gets clogged up and it's a really poor UX. This is, you know, an ongoing battle that, um, you know, we see in terms of people coming new into the space and wondering like, well, what's going on? I thought, uh, I thought Bitcoin was supposed to have 10 minute confirmations and why is my, why is my transaction not getting confirmed? And it's usually due to these um, these big spikes or big drops in hash rate, which result in a big spike in, in transactions waiting to be verified by the miners. So yeah, this can lead to some really long delays if you're trying to move uh, your Bitcoin to different exchanges or different wallets and things like that. Um, this is why many of us are still using Bitcoin Cash because it's fast, cheap, reliable. It's identical to Bitcoin in almost every way with the exception that it has more throughput. So, you know, from a purely utilitarian point of view, Bitcoin Cash to me is a better coin, but uh, you know, I respect everyone that's, you know, trying to do whatever they want to do with their money. So, you know, use it as you see fit, but uh, you know, I guess don't don't come complaining to me if uh, your BTC transactions are a little bit on the laggy end. The scaling debate was solved. On-chain scalability is quite useful. Who would have known? Next up, more than half of US investors are now interested in Bitcoin. So a study published this week showed that 55% of US investors are interested in adding Bitcoin to their portfolios. That's a 19% increase compared to this time last year. It means that the US market could potentially expand to 32 million households. Investors said that their perception of money had changed in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is kind of interesting. And uh, I think a lot of this perception also was likely due to the private banks continuing to print money. I mean, anyone who uh, is kind of opening up the newspaper and uh, checking out what the uh, what the Fed is doing would probably quickly realize anytime they print money, the value of their dollar goes down. It doesn't take rocket scientists to uh, 
you know, figure all that stuff out. But uh, you know, this is the great thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. You have this hedge against the status quo. And our top story. Could Bitcoin's code be taken down? Earlier this week, GitHub, the platform which hosts the Bitcoin software project, removed several other open source projects due to, cop due to a copyright complaint lodged by the Recording Industry Association of America, which is the RIAA. So none of the removals had anything to do with Bitcoin, but the move prompted many in the industry and the wider ecosystem to question you know, if Bitcoin could be potentially given the same treatment that GitHub did to this recent uh, removal of a YouTube downloader project. Now this, this repo in question was a, a pretty simple YouTube script that allowed users to yeah, download YouTube videos. Totally, you know, legitimate reasons why that, why, you know, something like that might be uh, useful to the people and, and it was an open source project. But yeah, the uh, RIAA decided to step in and nudge Microsoft, nudge GitHub to say, we don't like that. Maybe it's time to remove that. And uh, yeah, this got a lot of people paranoid that maybe, maybe they could do the same thing for Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, it's no secret that many world governments and traditional financial systems are pretty hostile towards the financial freedom that cryptocurrency offers. So it's not a really big stretch of uh, the imagination to imagine that, uh, you know, pressuring Microsoft or GitHub to remove Bitcoin could be a possibility. So the internet really uh, kind of lit up on, on Twitter wondering, you know, are we, are we screwed? Are, what's going on here? Um, but yeah, just to shed some light on this, to try to clear the air, for ordinary users, no, no, you will be. It, you would never be impacted by GitHub potentially removing uh, Bitcoin. Um, it might impact some developers contributing to Bitcoin. Um, fortunately, there's many other alternative services to GitHub, such as Bitbucket, such as uh, uh, Fabricator. There's a bunch of other open, open GitHub-like clients, and Git itself is an open source protocol itself and it's not really tied to GitHub, uh, I think what could happen is is that if GitHub were to ever remove Bitcoin, it would just slow down development probably for a little while. It would take a little while for the developers to kind of come to consensus on, on which, which, which new source, which new repo is the official source. Um, and that would likely take a little while to figure out. And when it comes to GitHub repos and who's the admin, that becomes this whole other yeah, consensus fight. Likely, what would happen is is there would be a big argument over who has who has control over over the repo, who has control over what gets approved, uh, who has control over yeah which pull requests get merged in, which don't, and uh, it could be a big ugly mess in terms of a community development standpoint. But for ordinary users just using Bitcoin, pretty much impactless. I mean, if you as long, so long as you hold your Bitcoin in a you know a non custodial wallet. They're your coins, you know. The GitHub doesn't really matter where the code itself is being uh, developed. It uh, the protocol is already out in production. The miners are running it. it. Has zero effect on the ordinary usage of Bitcoin. So, uh, yeah, the situation I think has really shed some light though on the whole aspect of open source projects. And uh, you know, I think it's good that people are actually talking. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion as well. Some of the guys behind Filecoin, or many people were suggesting the Filecoin that they should be creating some sort of open source version of GitHub to allow people to store their code uh, on, on chain. Uh, other people are already recommending that people people just leave backups of Bitcoin and other open source projects on things like IPFS. Uh, people are already doing that, have already done that for Bitcoin, so there's already these, a ton of backups. So even if GitHub decided to wipe Bitcoin off the map in terms of uh, removing them from, from their platform, the code itself still exists, it'll always exist, it's out in the open, uh, it's not going anywhere. So that is it. Uh, today is, actually tomorrow is Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. And actually, I think the US will have an, a big election coming up here before the next video. So good luck to all Americans. Let us know in the comments which candidate is more likely to pump the price. Is it uh, Mr. President Donald Trump or is it Sleepy Joe Biden? Which one is more likely to pump those crypto prices? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments, and uh, I'm sure many of us will be following along on that exciting news, and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye.